I had started to do a video about a problem I was having with our, our well system here. So when I, I had been gone for a few days and when I came back, I had used the garden hose um, to uh, water some plants, uh, tomato plants. Anyway, I noticed that the water would like spike up, the flow and pressure would spike up and then it would decline and then it would spike up and then it would decline every say 10 seconds. That's not normal, not what, have I, what I've experienced. So anyway, I'm doing a little research and seeing how I can uh, troubleshoot this on my own and, and save a lot of repair bills. So uh, one of the things that I'm doing now is I'm watching YouTube videos. <laughs> and one of them I'm watching is this one right here and I'll put a link if it uh, if it's successful, I think this guy has kind of pinpointed my problem, but I'll put a link in, in this uh, video as well. But there's plenty of great videos on YouTube as always, but I remember seeing this one in the past. And actually, um, when we bought this property, none of the well was working and all that. So we had to have new disconnect put in and uh, pressure switch, etc. So being proactive, I had bought a, um, air volume control valve for this. And this is a problem that he highlights in this video. And I, I saw it then, and I think that's what prompted me to buy this thing. It was relatively inexpensive on Amazon, and I've had it now for over a year. So I wonder if this is the problem. So this is the what I think I'm gonna need for tools. I'm gonna go out there and follow the troubleshooting tips that the guy gave, but I had bought a while ago an old pipe wrench um, I may need it to take off the old uh, volume control valve, which that is right there. So that's got a little little thing that allows pressure to change there. So that's got a little drain on the bottom. There's nothing there on the top, which is weird. Do I have to make a hole myself there? That's kind of odd. We'll see. And then a pair of chin locks and some gloves and all important Teflon tape. Are you like me that you've probably got 20 rolls of Teflon tape uh, scattered throughout your, your home and shop and car, etc. and never find one? Well, it took me about 10 minutes to find that one. So when I went out there, I realized that even though I had some great um, mosquito repellent, all natural repellent made of essential oils, etc., that the mosquitoes were kind of thick out there and they weren't biting me but they were just a nuisance they were all around me and makes it kind of hard to concentrate so anyway a while back i made up a little mini burn barrel very similar to my other one over there and uh some holes in the bottom etc so this is my little smudge pot so i put in some small sticks leaves and some good old uh, florida favorite uh, spanish moss in there i'm gonna light that and um, let it burn for just a little while until it starts to uh, taper out and then uh, blow it out, let it smoke. And that's gonna keep the mosquitoes away. Oh, and I meant to add that you should always uh, be careful, have a garden hose nearby whenever you're messing with fire. Take all the precautions possible. And I'm using a, a set of pliers to carry that. I should have covered this at the very start, but always make sure you have your power disconnected to the pump so it doesn't come on uh, while you're not wanting it to. So in this case, there's a disconnect here. And what, I'm, what I've done is I pulled this ant off the disconnect, <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna put the disconnect in. Go on, buddy. Yeah. And also understand I am not by any means a well uh, pump or tank technician. I'm just, Doing what I can, what I think is the problem. If I can't solve it, then I will call in a professional. So right now I'm letting, there is some water in the tank still, um, which was weird because I felt like the tank felt full, but could not feel any difference in the condensation on the tank. Now that I'm out here, I do feel, you know, I think the tank was like all the way full to the top. I'm not sure. I don't think it should be. So we're going to drain this and see how long it takes. Now, I don't know where the water level is, 
if it's above here and I take that off, it's just going to gush all over the place there, which uh, is fine. It's got to come out at some point, right? And everything here is sealed up for weather, so I'm not worried about it there. And the smudge pot's still working. So I'm waiting for that to drain. I'm going to uh, go ahead and get my gauge ready, take off this old Teflon tape, and then uh, get the new uh, control valve uh, taped up as well. Patience has never been one of my strong suits. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this tank to drain. I think it's past this point. I'm not sure. But let's see what happens. I have been slowly loosening this. I'm going to see if we get any water out of here. No. Okay, good. So there's the old valve coming out. These are beauty. Look at that. So here we go. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to brush out this opening here with a, uh, a wire brush to get all that corrosion or whatever's in there out. The old one looks just like the new one, so that's always a very comforting fact so now i'm taking the wire brush in here and by the way if you don't have one of these in your toolbox uh try to get one or two anyway they're great to have uh, at least you know uh, it helps with doing this kind of thing and then i always have another one that i use if i need to clean battery terminals or something like that or electrical contacts so this does a great job so now I'm going to put in the new valve, so you can see I put the Teflon tape on it, so that goes in there, and then we just, uh, we're going to thread it, get the threading started anyway, if we can. It's hard to do with one hand here. The threads were kind of, uh, uh, the technical term is boogered up. So I uh, got it in as hand tight as I could get. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the pipe wrench to get it tightened in and uh, to the position it needs to be. All right, so that's in position. Now I'm going to put on that uh, pressure gauge. And uh, get that in there and, and uh, crank it up, man. It's going on nicely. I'm going to get it hand tight and then go around to where the gauge faces, where we can read it. So the pump is turned on and it's building pressure. When I started it, I had the valve open on this little piece of garden hose, just so it wouldn't start against uh, any uh, opposing pressure. So once that came on and water came out for a while, I turned the pressure, or I turned the valve off with the hose here. We're going to let it gradually climb up to pressure. There it goes. Shut off right at 60. So I think the test here is where I was having trouble before, like I said, was the uh, water would cycle on and off and on and off um, and wouldn't build up to the pressure and stay there. So replacing this valve hopefully made the difference. If not, then I'll, uh, I'll probably defer to a professional. Let's see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the valve up over here, turn the water on and see what happens. A lot of pressure. So that pressure should decay at uh, to about 40, and then the pump should kick on. Now before it wasn't even doing that, so I think I've solved the problem, and uh, celebration ensued. So we'll see what happens here. Let's
see, we're about 38. 30, yeah, 38. 36, maybe. There it goes. You heard it come on, and there goes the pressure. It's working like it's supposed to. I probably saved myself about two or three hundred dollars in a service call and parts. So there you have it. Um, have a little confidence in your ability to do things and do a little troubleshooting beforehand and see if your symptoms match a common problem. That's basically what I did. I do want to thank the uh, creator of that YouTube and I'll put uh, a link to that video in the bottom. So there it went off again at 60 and we're still flowing water. All good. All good at the Suwannee Homestead. And uh, looks like my smudge pot is about out. Mosquitoes are telling me that.